Hey, good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. And thanks to the fair for having me, Dorica, Anna, which is not here yet. Yeah. Eugenia. Thank you <laughs> for having me. And also thank you to the Swiss Embassy who supports my stay here. And so my name is Suzanne König and I am going to talk about my firm, which is called König Bureau. And the topic today is new art collectors and new platforms for promoting art. Um, in this topic, I'm going to focus on broadening the classic gallery model with uh, project services. So, this is the website of my firm. And how? I must tell you, I have received six topics from the fair, six topics which are um, interesting, so I'm going to answer those questions one by one, so six parts. And the first one is I'm going to introduce the company as a multifaceted company for, for collectors and audiences. And as you can see on the website, we have <coughs> artists which we represent. Those are currently seven Swiss contemporary positions. And on the other hand, we have the projects page. I guess this one is more interesting today. <laughs> um, so, yeah. This name, König Büro, um, was initially König Büro für Kunst, which means office for art. I decided to do every work and every service which is in contact with contemporary art. Um, I started the project, that's, that's already the second topic from the fair. Um, I started the project in parallel um, to a job at Kunsthaus Zürich, that's a I think one of the most famous museums in Switzerland. Um, before I had worked for the Zentrum Paul Klee, which is a, a monographic museum for Paul Klee. And I had also already done some exhibitions for the Zurich Artists Association. And then in 2013, I was at this Kunsthaus Zürich, and I felt like I was in a golden cage. So I was at the museum, I had studied um, curation and museum education, but I was not able to, to proceed and to really get in touch with art. So I had some projects and I decided to quit the job. Um, but then it was very difficult. First of all, working independently proved to be more difficult than I had expected. Um, not only realizing exhibitions for recognized customers, for example, as you can see, it's chronological. I must scroll down. Um, <coughs> Here we go, okay. Um, the first two exhibitions I was able to do for customers were, na na na, 
those two here. This one was an exhibition for a small museum in, in a town which is called Sursee. Oh, where is it? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm not very used to this laptop. Here it is. Okay, here we go. So this one was one of the first exhibitions I was able to curate in 2015. Um, it was about building sites. Um, and the other one at the same time was for a practice which wanted to, to show artworks in their premises. And there was also another exhibition at the same time. Here it is. Which was called Aller Retour, Going Places for a famous foundation called Merian Foundation, which is in Basel and they support artists who go on residencies where I was the co-curator with a colleague. So I started this um, working independently. I had uh, a whole lot of work to do during six months, but um, it was not easy to receive economical recognition for that. So it was even precarious. Um, I was working independently, having recognized customers, but I was not able to make my living from that. I could not afford a flat, I could not even afford a room, so I lived with friends behind the sofa. Um, first I thought, okay, this is going to take two weeks, then afterwards I thought, it's going to take two months, but then um, it was eight months. So I just worked, I didn't have enough money, and um, I just did my work for the art scene. And I thought, okay, I just, I want to do it so I can, I can do it. Um, but then, um, I realized that maybe this curating and mediating stuff is, is not the best to make my living. So now the third part um, regarding innovation. Um, the innovation in my firm, König Büro, um, was that I realized that there is some need for certain services in bigger companies. Um, I started to just hang works on the wall. I started to just advise people what they could buy. I did mediation for specific groups, um, just depending on the context. I just did what the customer, he or she was, willing to pay for. Um, then further, I realized that 
art for a wide audience is also a possibility. Um, I realized that different sectors also have a need for art. So I didn't stay in the art sector, art for art. Um, I went to the life sciences sector, to the health sector, and to bigger companies um, who had between 50 and 100 employees. And the result was the exhibition for a bioengineering company. Where is it? This one. Um, that was a year later, in 2016, a quite huge exhibition with uh, 100 photographs. And this engineering company usually produces plants. These are the plants. Um, they produce plants which uh, make pharmaceutical products. And they wanted to have an art exhibition at their premises, um, at the offices, at the production site. And they hired me to do the exhibition. For them, it was a marketing tool. They invited their customers, their employees, their partners. And I had no knowledge from this um, bioengineering company. I just had the art knowledge, which I could provide. Here you can see we exhibited the photographs also in the staircase. Sorry, I'm having a bit trouble seeing scrolling. Um, staircase. Here, that's the entrance and that's an old production site. Here we go. So probably this this was the first um, service for for a non art customer, and then it continued up to this here. In 2017, I received a call from one of the directors from the children's hospital um, who said, um, hi, I heard you, you do art services. I am the director of the children's hospital in Zurich and we received a container with a light installation. We have no one at the hospital who is an art expert, can you please take care of this installation? And I had no idea what it was, I just said, yes, I can do that. And then I went there um, and I saw that it was a light installation by James Turrell, who was at that time being set up. Um, And here we go. I realized, okay, um, this is one of the greatest artists at our times. And I can now work with this installation and do art mediation for the children's hospital. So in close collaboration with the children's hospital, we developed a mediation concept for internal audiences, but also for external audiences, because James Terrell has 
fans who traveled the whole world to see his installations. And suddenly, I couldn't do it all by myself. I had to, to get three assistants who, who also did guided tours and still do guided tours. Today is the 1st of March, so yeah. Um, one of my assistants is now at this like installation and doing another tour. So suddenly it was was getting much bigger. And I can also pay my assistants. I don't only do internships. Um, as the customer is also willing to pay for the assistance, it is, it is also a good job for them. So here we go, that's my favorite picture. Um, yeah, so. The next question, the fourth topic is, which are the problematics you see in the traditional art market and which are the strategies you develop to solve these difficulties? Um, traditional art market and solve difficulties. And the longer I work in the art market, I feel like I don't really understand how this market works. Honestly, I, I don't know. Um, but what I can say is that probably the traditional art market is defined by certain roles which are structured in a hierarchy and currently this structure is being disrupted because artists lead their studios like a firm. They sell the artworks by themselves and we have um, showrooms in a digital way, not in physical spaces. So. What do I do in this situation? I just change my role depending on the context. Um, that means when someone asks me, what is your function, what do you do? I sometimes don't know because it depends on the context. Sometimes I advise, sometimes I curate, sometimes I mediate, or sometimes I just manage. I think that might be a way to deal with these changes in the art market. But it is quite difficult because I would like to tell people I am a proper gallerist or I am a curator, but it's not possible. So um, maybe I feel the contemporary role, which is multifaceted. Um, Another example is this one here <clears throat> for the studio of Pipilotti Rist. Um, she needed someone in 2016 who did the project management of her solo exhibition. That was the the new work she did for, for this exhibition. Here we go. Um, this was at the New Museum in New York, where she had a solo exhibition on four floors, and she needed kind of a, a manager, an assistant who just did the, the secretary part. I was organizing, doing the budget, writing emails, and my art knowledge was not at all needed. But okay, I did this for, for half a year and I was able to be part of, uh, of an international scene. But then afterwards, it was over and I had closed this this project and this role, and then I went further. So what I mean is maybe this is, 
This is it, yeah. <laughs> this is it. Sometimes I would like to be a curator, but in this context, it was not a possibility. Um, in conclusion, I would say I, I give the customer what he or she needs, depending on the situation. Sometimes I'm also leading a jury or opening exhibitions, and then they call me curator or director of, of the art sector of a canton in Switzerland. But then the next day I'm, I'm just the project manager. So fifth uh, part is how important is the curatorial and art mediation aspect? And how do you implement it for your project? Um, curating and art mediation build my workspace. So it is the ground for all my work. But in Switzerland, mediation only takes the last place in hierarchy levels. So mediation is not recognized at all. Um, however, I consider it crucial that an art expert is able to mediate between different audiences or segments. And even if I don't curate or mediate in a certain project, those activities are in my background. And additionally, I think mediation is fun. So I sometimes just do projects on my own with children or senior people because I think it's, it's important to do it also um, when it's not a authority position in the art world. But I, I don't really care about it. I want to show you this project, which was with a group of seniors. Um, I went to the village where a group of seniors was interested in contemporary art and I invited artists who brought their works and talked about their topics. And finally, we went to the Contemporary Art Museum in Zurich where the senior people had never been before. And we even had a guided tour with the curator, Michael Hiltbrunner. Um, and these experiences tell me that it is important also to do mediation, even when it's not very, even though it's not very recognized in the art scene. What time is it? Ha. Okay, then the last question is, which is your experience in promoting or selling young Swiss artists? Honestly, I have not yet tried to promote Swiss artists internationally because it takes a long time to establish my own firm and those artistic positions. And I know that Swiss artists are recognized internationally, but um, it's, it's much easier national because um, my guess is people like to imagine artists as a part of their own community. Maybe the possibility to imagine them as their friends or um, part of their family. And that might be easier with the same nationality. But um, 
I don't know whether this would also be possible on an international level. So um, I don't know if uh, you would be interested to see Swiss positions here in Madrid. Maybe I try it out once, um, but I think it's much easier to stay on a national level. Um, We have already done this on a fair in Switzerland, in Zurich, which was very successful. And maybe it doesn't even look like Swiss art. <laughs> um, we could also do it in Spain, but the collectors at this fair in Zurich were really interested in Swiss positions and uh, Spanish collectors, I don't know whether they would be interested in, in seeing those positions. So um, that was uh, a bit chaotic. I'm, I'm sorry, but my time is up. <laughs> um, thank you for your attention and be, uh, feel free to comment or to ask any questions. Um, I can I can talk uh, a lot more if you're if you're interested. So that was it from me. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have questions <laughs> or comments? Yeah, I am interested in the part of artists that you did not touch so much. Yeah. Uh, and what is your experience in, in that sector? Uh, do you give uh, visibility to artists so that people can buy through the web? Or just is it connection with this? What is your experience? Um, yes, I did not focus on this part because I wanted to tell you about the, the more um, different projects and these artists I support since um, seven, eight years and we meet a lot at their studio but when someone asks me um, which positions are interesting at the moment, I also advise them to have a look at those positions. Um, additionally, um, I also do shows with them together um, on our own premises and also at fairs. But that's really more the traditional gallery part. <clears throat> Economically, does it work? Or well, of course, uh, when we sell a work, then it, then it's okay. But the volume is not the sum. Well, no, no. I think because we're we're still uh, from the younger section, it's not really working that much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I wanted to ask you about um, audiences and collectors. In which way? We, in which way do you approach them? In which way you co contact them? How they come to your exhibition? Or... Um, the audiences. Um, the easiest way is when we do the participatory projects with the seniors, for example, mm -hmm. or with a group of children. Um, we had a project with a kindergarten who went to visit artist studios. But then um, the classic exhibitions, mm -hmm. they stay in the art sector. Mm -hmm. In the art sector, yeah. But how do we address them? That's difficult. That's difficult. I know, that's um, why I asked the question. Yeah, yeah. Because what we need is a 
people visiting the exhibitions mm -hmm. and start buying them. Mm -hmm. Supporting the artists in their career. Mm -hmm. I, I know how difficult it is to do it with emergent mm -hmm. artists, and that is why I was asking if you are working in a new way uh, through mediation or through, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the the exhibition I showed you in this bioengineering company mm -hmm. and was a good start to also address this other sector, life sciences, medical care. Um, I think that that develops from from year to year, but I cannot actively address them. I just inform them and sometimes they visit the exhibitions, sometimes they don't. But um, maybe I also, apart from the exhibition and sort of mediation program with them, mm -hmm. with other people, either clients or, mm -hmm. or employees, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they can really get closer to the art. Uh, yes, that's right. Um, maybe it's also about the location. Mm -hmm. um, we made one exhibition at a restaurant with a uh, Michelin star chef and some people just came because they wanted to have good food. So um, the art was not really their main interest, but the food. And I realized that food is a good way to attract people. And we even sold some works at the restaurant um, to people who just were uh, food lovers. <laughs> that was one solution to your question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where is the chef? Here. He's here. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.